What's up, you two? Welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan and Nick Fan, your host, and let's get right into it. But before we do, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment. You want to know when the next video we're going to drop, hit the notification bell. All right, let's get into this video. I know all of y'all are anxious to hear what I've got to say about RJ Barrett and Emmanuel, Emmanuel quickly returning. But we're going to talk about this game just for a second, and then we're going to jump right into that, and then we're going to be out of here. All right, let's get into the game. First, let's talk about the Knicks in their division. They're actually 4-3 and three in the division, uh, averaging 114 points, beating their opponents by 4.1 points a game. When you talk about the Raptors, they're not really doing well. I don't know. If you think about it, the way the Raptors have been moving the last couple of days, trading away all these plays, re one would say rebuilding, um, it looked like R.J. Barrett just might have to be the man of that team or Emmanuel Quickly. If you, if you ask me out of the two, I think Emmanuel Quickly have a higher ceiling. But like I said, let's get into this game and then we're going to get up out of here. As you see the injuries, we have Mitchell Robinson out, out for the season. Uh, Josh Hart, you know, he's supposed to be out. It might be a game time decision. We'll see him when the game start. They have um, Polete out. Excuse me, I can't pronounce his name. And um, Otto Porter Jr. out with injuries. But like I said, the Knicks are four and three against the division. They're shooting 46% from the field, actually 2% lower than last year. The Raptors come in this game shooting 48%, 1% higher than last year. So the last time these teams actually met, um, Julius Randle had a team high 34 points. Um, OG out of Nobi scored 29 points. So it's a kind of mix up right now because we switched players. So like I said, we're going to get into them two players. And we're going to see. I know everybody in Toronto is talking about that OJ, you know, divulged any secrets. And I'm, I wonder if did um, RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly give away anything with Tom Thibodeau's, you know, offense and defense. I laugh when I say that. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> but um, like I said, and this game coming in the last 10 games, top performances, are, um, excuse me, got a little tongue twisted, RJ Barrett. Julius Randle been averaging 24 points in the last 10 games, nine rebounds and 4.8 assists. Brunson, even though he missed them two games in the last 10 games, he's still averaging 22 points, six assists. So this is going to be very interesting. When we move over to um, Toronto, we see that Scotty Barnes is leading that team. I, I'm about to say, I almost forgot about Scotty Barnes, to be honest, but RJ Barrett going to have to be that Batman to Scotty Barnes. And so far he is, you know what I'm saying? So far individually, you know, for the team and players, it's working out well for Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett stat wise. But if you look at the team record, one would say, hey, they went since the trade, they four and six. The Knicks since the trade, eight and two. So you you, you look at it right now, both one would say is best. I would say the Knicks got the best of the um, trade because you look at the wins that we got compared to the wins that they they have. And some would say, oh, Siakam just got traded. But six, like I said, Siakam just got traded. So he probably was there for at least eight or nine of them, long, you know, games that, you know, they played the four to six. So I don't know. I would say the Knicks got the better of the trade. Like I already said, uh, the Raptors, their last 10 games, Scotty Barnes with averaging 20 points, 8.4 8 rebounds, 5.7 assists, and 1.4 blocks. Emmanuel quickly is averaging 2.3 points over the last 10 games for Toronto. And like I said, the last 10 games, the Knicks are 8-2. They're averaging 113 points, 49 rebounds, 2.25 assists, 7.3 steals, 5.5 blocks uh, while shooting 46% from the field. And they allow their opponents only to score 101 points a game. Over their last 10 games, the Raptors, which I said before, 4-6, they're averaging 119 points. Uh, 41 rebounds, 29 assists, six steals, 5.1 blocks, um, shooting 50% from the field, and their opponents is averaging 120 points a game. So like I said, when you look at the team, you know, the players, RJ Barrett, man, you quickly, they are playing much better than they was for the, uh, for the Knicks. But if you look at the team, they, I don't know where they at, so I'm not. I'm not, I don't watch them on a regular, consistent basis. So all I know is that the Knicks is doing very good since the trade. I know we had a couple of losses, we, you know, turned a couple of people's stomachs, but um, overall the Knicks is in a good position. If you ask me, that's just how I feel. 
All right, so let's jump over to the main the main topic. Why y'all all here? Y'all want to hear what I have to say about R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. Like I said, individually, they have been playing very good, very well, whatever you want to say. R.J. Barrett, 20 points since the trade, shooting 55% from the field, 39% from downtown. Emmanuel quickly, 45% from downtown. Field goal percentage, 42. He averaging 18 points. I mean... When I look at these two guys, and I look at the Knicks record, as I said before, the Knicks are uh, 25 and 17. Last year we was uh, 20, um, excuse me, we was 23 and 19. We are two games better than what we was last year. And I was thinking if we had, you know, it's been 10 games now. You have to think about if R.J. Barry and Manu quickly was still on this team, will we have a better record? Like, what would our record be if we, st- if we didn't make that trade? One, we have to think about that. But like I said, these guys are playing lights out over there, one would say, in Toronto. But, you know, they're coming into the garden, and one would have to think that since they've been there, talking to the other players, especially, you know, Scotty Barnes, filling them in, filling them in on Julius Randle's weaknesses. I ain't going to talk about Jalen Brunson's weakness because when you look at Brunson, he really don't have any weakness in his game other than he's a little short, he's undersized, because he can do it all. Only thing he's not doing is them high-flying dunks. But he get into the paint. He's very sneaky. He outmaneuver people with his footwork. So I don't know if there's anything they can divulge on Jalen Bronson that's going to help them. But as we look at Julius Randle, it ain't much to, you know, <laughs> to tell. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, the NBA know Julius Randle's game. And I'm pretty sure, you know, it's going to be what plays that Tom Thibodeau call, what he like to run, that's going to be the the giveaway if R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly talk about anything to the coach and the other players. But y'all heard me talk about this defense for a while, and teams already know what to expect from these from the defense, from um, Tibbs' D offense. Like I said in the earlier video, it's going to be a very fun game. It's going to be interesting to watch. So, like I said, did they give away any secrets on the defense? Like I said, the defense is already known, in my opinion, throughout the NBA, how to break it down. But the offense is what I'm talking about. And I know one would say that the offense is running a little different. We see Denver Chizio, the starter now. Um, we got Achua. It's different players coming off the bench. You got um, Miles McBride running the backup point guard. But Emmanuel quickly and RJ Barrett went against some of these guys in practice. They know their strength, they know their weaknesses. So have they, you know, been spilling the beans, you know what I'm saying? We're going to see tonight. I'm very interested. I want to see how this game starts, you know. I just want to see how did the Knicks make a mistake, you know what I'm saying? I don't know when it comes to R.J. Barrett. I'm not going to, I don't know. The, the you know, the judge, the jury is still out. But with Emmanuel, quickly, I made a video last year saying that this kid is projected to be an all-star. I really haven't changed my mind. And I think out of the two, is going to really help Emmanuel quickly more. As you see, he's scoring more. His percentage is up. You know what I'm saying? He's more efficient. One would have to say, did Tibbs play these guys out of position? Was he running the offense right? Was he, did he, Tibbs know what he was doing with these two individual players? So it'll make you wonder, wonder about the team going forward with the New York Knicks. But so far, we're doing okay. Um, we only like two two four two three to four games out of third place so we can't complain i'm not going to talk about tips unless there's a reason to talk about tips but like i said um rj and man you quickly are coming back for the first time what secrets have they given up i don't know will it make a difference i don't know because you, when you get on the basketball court you still have to um you still have to execute so will it make a difference them divulging secrets to the other team i don't know we're going to see tonight it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. I know the garden is going to show them some love. I mean, I'm not going to be hating on them unless they start getting a little too much in my team ass because I'm going to be honest with you. I like RJ Barrett. I like Emmanuel quickly, but I'm a New York Knicks fan. So even if Jalen Brunson got traded off this team, I give him his applause when he first stepped on the court. But once the game starts, I'm going to be rooting against you. What are y'all going to be doing, my fellow Nick K dwellers? Are y'all going to be rooting for R.J. Barrett and Manu quickly to have a good game against the New York Knicks? I mean, I want them to have a good career because we drafted them, you know what I'm saying, homegrown in you know, a sense. But when they play us, 
I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. So tell me what y'all think in the comments. And with that being said, I want everybody to stay safe, stay healthy, God bless, and peace. Thank <laughs> you.